5 has been in there for one week. Oh, these are fun. This is a brand new drawn comb. That one's got nectar, eggs. Eggs from wall to wall and a little bit of nectar up here in this top part. Let's take the other side. Same thing. Little patch of nectar right here. A little bit of pollen. And then the eggs. Eggs going all the way. Yeah, clear over here there's eggs in it. So the whole thing has eggs laid in it. Trap brood right here in the center. This is all larvae. And... There's about day old larvae. I see one egg on the very outside edge. And they're keeping the comb really pretty straight. When you work with top bars, your problem is sometimes they'll start to curve them. And the solution is to just take, you can always take your knife and cut it just a little bit like that. And as you do, you'll just push it back. And now it's perfectly straight inside the comb. You don't need to do that, but if you want to keep them perfect, you can. And if they start to move from one end to the other, then you're okay. That's the comb that we put in, right? Look how quick she filled that with brood. So this had to go in. She had to go in here eight days ago because mm -hmm. that's capped now. That's the first stuff that's getting capped. Cat brood larvae. Same on that side. Those are the only two we gave them. Everything else that's in here. How fun are these? Man, that she had they had to build this that night. I mean, it's just yeah, she's got cat larvae. So she had to lay some that day. That's nectar. And that next Look at that. Yeah, that nectar's about ready to be. <laughs> oh, wow. But what a cool tool for queen rearing, for queen rearing, but comb honey, to be able to just put this above a queen excluder once they draw, you know, when they draw on it, and let them put comb honey in there. There's a new one that they just started. That's a little drone comb, and I noticed that the last one on this side was also drone. Yeah, and I found that out in my top bar experience that they would put drones usually on the outside of the whole hive. That one they started it a little screwy. Just that one, and that's one of the things you end up with. The, they'll start one in a different spot. Pretty easy solution though. Tap your bees off. And just take it like that and put it where you like it. And in about five, 10 minutes, they'll start working it again and they'll put it right where it goes. Turn that off right there so they don't want to draw on that again. Brand new baby comb. And that's the one that I kept on seeing the queen on. Snow white comb. And there's an egg in the bottom. Of everyone. In fact, there's your queen right in the middle. She's still working that. She's waiting as they draw it to I mean, she's got eggs in a perfect pattern going right around this little swoop. And I'm betting as soon as they get them long enough, she's laying in them. Some of those aren't even long enough yet to be things, but here's your queen right mm -hmm. here. She's beautiful. <laughs> she went to the other side. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> And now it went from a handful of bees to a nice little box and we can either divide it and keep on going or we can add it to a bigger box. But for someone just getting started in this, it's and, like a and, top and bar. It's an huh? educational tool to be able to show people and that's not intimidating for people to grab that many bees. And I can show you eggs on this frame and I can show you the pro pro progression of the hive. Um, to be able to see the difference between drone comb and worker brood and to be able to see the nectar and the pollen and how they store it and to sit and watch her lay. I mean, that's just a lot of, it's a wonderful little box.
Now if we want to, we could take queen cells that we graft. If we took three or four of those little tiny frames, it's like very inexpensive number of bees. Take those out, put them into another small box. We can let that queen cell hatch in there. Mm -hmm. Let it breed, and if, if it doesn't turn out, if she gets killed, I didn't lose an entire hive of bees like this. I only used four or five frames of maybe three cups of bees max. Grab a full frame and just show what the difference is in between one of these small ones and a full size frame. So, so that's a full frame that goes into a deep super. So that's almost as, it is as long as this box is because we built it so you can put a frame, a shallow frame this way if you desire, or there's that. So it's what, maybe one sixth the size, a little more than a sixth of the size of a frame. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, about a sixth of a frame. And in a compact little box like that, the bees can control the temperature, they can control the humidity, they control everything to be able to raise a queen. So how many frames are they yet to do? This one, one is empty. They just started, and two right here. So in a week's time, obviously eight days, because she has cap brood in there, they cap it on the eighth day. So they probably capped these either last night or you know this morning. And so obviously they've been in there eight or nine days and they've done all but two frames. Yeah, so that's the frame before it gets anything done to it. And that's all it is, just a wedge on the bottom. Let's see, we look at these. This one's almost, yeah, that's the one with drone bird. And they've got some drone cells and drone eggs. There's eggs in there right now. So though. It's springtime, they're raising drones. Just to explain to people how uh, comb is gonna be harvested from this, you're gonna take one of these frames that have comb all the way around it. You're gonna take a knife around the inside edge, drop it into a baggie, seal the baggie, which this is the size of a, a sandwich bag. Drop it into the baggie, Squish it and leave it overnight on your counter. In the morning, all the wax is going to float to the top. All the honey is on the bottom. You pop the bottom of the bag and you can have it come out like liquid honey, just like you do icing. You're all done. You don't need an extractor, don't need a bottling tank, don't need uh, strainers or buckets or bottles. Just a little ba baggie and you're, you're done. This would be the first frame that they built themselves and obviously they got this part of it. You can see they probably started right here and she started laying in it as soon as she had the space. She was just dying for a place to lay. This has only been capped. She's still, that bee right there is still feeding one of the, one of the larvae in the, in the, but there's a larvae right here and these two right here, this capping is not even done yet. So these have just been capped today. And you can see larvae all the way out to here. And these out here are probably four day old, two or three day old larvae. Probably too old to graft from, but. And here's the other thing. You put a breeder queen in here, it's really, really easy to keep track of where she's laying. You can slide a new frame in and she can fill that whole frame in just a few hours or in a day and you come back three days later and now you have the exact age larvae. And you don't have to take a whole frame. You can just take this little tiny thing and go sit and do your grafts. And that'll graft, you'll be able to graft, you know, 45, 50, 60. Oh man, tons of, you get tons of grafts off of a frame that size. Hold it in the palm of your hand and graft out of it. So. These are just as calm as I can talk That's a top bar hive. Uh, a lot of people have top bar hives. They're uh, desired by many people instead of a Langstroth. You can see he has a separation board 
There's nothing on that side of it. This side there's comb. He has a clear window so he can kind of see how they're doing. But they build onto the wall, they make a mess, and that's how your hive is. With a top bar, it has the frames up on top where the bees can't get through the top and the bottom, so you can't add anything to the top. It's fairly large, so it's hard to move, but it's a great educational tool. Now, this is a great big, huge top bar hive. One of the things I like to do is I go through, find my queen, put her on one side, and drop a follower board, a solid board, down the middle. And what that does is it takes these bees over here and makes them queenless. But you're taking a huge amount of bees and splitting them up. And if that queen doesn't, isn't successful and you lose her, these could become laying workers. You could have problems with it. And then you lose all of this. With this, it's really versatile. I know the queen, we just see the queen here. Slide it over here, drop a follower board into here. Now you have two hives. She works on this side. They're all on this side. You can cap another box on top if you need to later with a uh, follower board in it and just let them build up. This one will build a new, this one will build queen cells. And then if you need to, split them up again, pull a frame out, drop another follower board in there and you can put an entrance on the side. You can put, you could put as many as four queens breeding in this little tiny box at one time. It just, now, what happens if you decide to sell one of the queens and the, the, it's okay, one so queen in this got box? A queen on either side, and you sell this one, you can actually take this to your customer, take the frame of bees out, put it in the hive. Laying queens are readily accepted by a hive that's queenless. Sit, shake them off in there, let them go. Now, take the follower board out and slide the two together. Now, this queen can use the whole hive. So this little box is just like a top bar, in ex with the exception is it's about a quarter of the size of a top bar. And, and so all the things the that you can thing. learn out of a top bar, you could le learn out of this. You can't do this with a top bar or you're going to break your combs off. These are small enough that they can support it and you also have the wood around it. You're growing on natural comb, so anybody that's a, a fan of the natural comb and using it that way, the durability of a frame around them. Um, no difference between this and the top bar hive. As far as the comb goes, it's just really, really easy to handle. No getting a knife out and cutting the sides off. Um, it's the ultimate backyard hive as well. Now, if this gets too big, you can either divide it or you can go add additional boxes to it or you can even add a deep box to it that the frames go the other direction. So with this type of a setup, it's interchangeable with all the other Langstroth equipment but allows you to do a top bar. These bees have just started to cap their center brood. In another eight days, everything that's been laid in here will be capped. And then in another, at the end of 21 days, there's eggs on every frame from here to here and there's bees on all those frames. When those hatch, this thing's going to almost double in size. Well, to solve the problem, then you just take another one of these and stick it over the top. They'll start building in this one, or you could take this and stick it over a deep or under a deep. How the cool thing is, it's half of one of these, so if you wanted to, you can stick them onto another hive and requeen it. If this hive is queenless, I can stick this on it, and I take this, this size of lid, stick it on the other side, or put another one of these right there and you put a shallow box to requeen that hive and they keep their brood, they keep things up, there's young bees in the hive all the time, it's just makes sense.